morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Abbas Zaidi. I'm a cardiology registrar and former cryo research fellow. And I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me here to talk about physiological right ventricular adaptation in athletes. So a common dilemma in sports cardiology is the athlete that presents with ECG anomalies and structural cardiac remodeling, who presents in a diagnostic gray zone between athlete's heart and cardiomyopathy. And we know a lot about left ventricular physiological remodeling in athletes. We know, for example, that around 2% of healthy Caucasian athletes demonstrate increased left ventricular wall thicknesses in the range where it looks like they might have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. We know that around 14% of healthy Caucasian athletes get a dilated left ventricle in the range that it looks as though they might have a dilated cardiomyopathy. These physiological changes are even more profound in healthy black athletes. We know that a staggering 18% of healthy adult male black athletes have left ventricular wall thicknesses of 13, 14, 15, or even 16 millimeters, which makes it look very much as though they might have an HCM, which they don't in fact have. So the athlete's left ventricle has been extensively studied over the past 20 years. So we know all about physiological left ventricular changes in adult Caucasian male athletes adult Caucasian female athletes, uh, male and female Caucasian adolescent athletes, black adult males, black adult females, uh, black adolescent males, and black adolescent male and female athletes. And we know that you should expect to see the most profound physiological left ventricular remodeling in athletes who are adult, who are male, who have large body size, who are black, and those who compete in endurance sports. But what about the athlete's right ventricle? Well, have a look at this, these two slides. On the left, we see an, a healthy 30-year-old non-athlete. Compare and contrast to the, uh, the picture on the right, which is the heart of a healthy cyclist. And you can see that the athlete exhibits physiological dilatation of all four cardiac chambers, including the right ventricle. And we sometimes see this kind of ECG in healthy athletes. You can see that there's extensive anterior T-wave inversion. So we may be presented with an athlete who has ECG changes, such as T-wave inversion, and physiological dilatation, or dilatation of the right ventricle. And the question arises, is this all physiological change, or could this be another cardiomyopathy, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, or ARVC, which is characterized by fibrofatty replacement of the right ventricular wall, anterior T-wave inversion, progressive dilatation of the right ventricle, a tendency towards ventricular arrhythmias, and in the worst case scenario, sudden cardiac death. And we know that around 14% of sudden deaths in UK athletes are attributable to ARVC. Now this is what I call barn door, in other words, very obvious ARVC. You can see that there's gross dilatation of the right ventricular outflow tract, and there are wall motion abnormalities. However, athletes with ARVC will not tend to present with such florid disease. They will tend to present in this diagnostic gray zone with ECG anomalies and structural remodeling of the right ventricle. So how do we differentiate athlete's heart from ARVC? Well, these are the diagnostic criteria for ARVC. They're divided into six categories. We have structural changes, tissue changes. We have repolarization and depolarization anomalies, arrhythmias, and family history. In each of these six categories, one assigns minor or major criteria which are combined to give an overall likelihood of a true diagnosis of ARVC. So for example, two major criteria from two different categories is considered definite ARVC. I'd like to just talk to you about why these task force criteria, when applied to athletic individuals, may be problematic and can lead to false diagnosis of ARVC in healthy athletes. So if we start with structural changes, these are the criteria. We have on echocardiography, dilatation of the right ventricular outflow tract in the long axis view, in the short axis view, or a reduction in the fractional area change. And on cardiac MRI, we have increased body surface area index volumes or a reduction in the ejection fraction. And importantly, in addition to these structural changes, we need to demonstrate concomitant regional wall motion abnormalities to fulfill imaging criteria for ARVC. So why might these be problematic when applied to athletic individuals? Well, this is a study that we performed looking at right ventricular adaptation in healthy athletes. We studied 675 athletes, 300 of whom were black. And this is some of our findings. We found 
This is a chart showing the range of values for the right ventricular outflow tract in the parasternal long axis view, which is one of the criteria for diagnosing ARVC. And these are healthy athletes, remember, and the white bars shows white athletes, black bars show black athletes. And you can see that around half of healthy black athletes and two thirds of healthy white athletes have minor dilatation of the right ventricular outflow tract. And about 30% of black athletes and 40% of healthy white athletes will have marked dilatation of the right ventricular outflow tract in the range compatible with a possible diagnosis of ARVC. What about right ventricular fractional area change, another diagnostic criteria for ARVC? This is work from Arco Teske in the Netherlands. The top chart shows non-athletic controls. The middle chart shows non-elite athletes, and the bottom chart shows elite athletes. And you can see that as your athletic prowess increases, resting right ventricular fractional area change progressively reduces. Now, this is probably akin to what we see in the left ventricle. Often, healthy athletes appear to have sluggish left ventricles at rest. It probably just reflects the fact that they're used to performing at very high workloads. But this will give you more false positive criteria for ARVC. Now, remember that you also have to demonstrate wall motion abnormalities to fulfill imaging criteria for ARVC. But this can be problematic as well, because we've all seen this kind of echocardiogram, perhaps a slightly foreshortened image, giving the appearance of an apparent wall motion abnormality at the right ventricular apex. But we know that visual assessment of right ventricular wall motion is highly subjective and is prone to false positives. Arco Teske, again from the Netherlands, showed that around 15% of healthy controls were adjudged to have right ventricular wall motion abnormalities by visual assessment alone. But when they performed TDI strain in the same individuals, none of them, in fact, had wall motion abnormalities. This is some of our data. We found about eight athletes with right ventricular wall motion abnormalities on echo, but when we performed CMRI in the same individuals, none of them turned out to have true wall motion abnormalities. I'm not gonna talk about tissue characterization of the wall because this is really post-mortem um, data and I like to keep this focused on practical assessment of um, living, living athletes. So moving on to repolarization abnormalities, major criterion for ARVC is T-wave inversion in V1 to V3 or beyond above the age of 14. A minor is T-wave inversion in V1 to V2 or laterally above the age of 14. Why might these cause false positive diagnosis when applied to athletes? Well, we've all seen 15, 16, or even 17-year-olds with anterior T-wave inversion as part of a normal, healthy, juvenile pattern. More problematic is this group of individuals, a black athlete. We know that around 15% of healthy black athletes will have this kind of ECG with anterior T-wave inversion in V1 to V4 which will give them a false major criterion for ARVC. Moving on to depolarization and conduction abnormalities. The uh, on ECG, we have the epsilon wave as a major criterion and increased terminal activation duration of the QRS complex is a minor criterion. So that's measured from the nadir of the S wave to the end of the QRS complex. And on the signal average ECG, one or more abnormal parameter is considered a minor criterion for ARVC. Now these, again, can lead to false positive diagnoses in athletes. Why is that? Well, this is data from Aaron Bagish's group in the United States, and they found that incomplete right bundle branch block is commonly seen in athletes and appears to be a function of increasing right ventricular size. Now this probably just reflects a physiological conduction delay around an enlarged right ventricle, but it will lead to a prolonged terminal activation duration of the QRS complex and another false positive minor criterion for ARVC. Signal average ECG, again, problematic. We know from Alessandro Biffi from Italy that around 20% of healthy athletes will have at least one abnormal signal average ECG parameter, similar to a figure that we found in healthy athletes. This is data from the Netherlands um, looking entirely at endurance athletes and we found that 100% of these had at least one abnormal signal average DCG parameter, another false positive criterion for ARVC. Arrhythmias, again, this can be problematic. Major criterion is superior axis VT, minor criterion, inferior axis VT, 
or more than 500 ventricular ectopics in 24 hours. But we know that athletes get ventricular arrhythmias. This is data from Alessandro Biffy again. This group of athletes who had more than 2,000 premature ventricular contractions in 24 hours, some of them turned out to have a cardiomyopathy. However, this group of athletes with up to 2,000 premature ventricular contractions in 24 hours, none of them turned out to have a cardiomyopathy at long-term follow-up. And this is more potential for false positive diagnosis of ARVC. And finally, even family history is not straightforward. Major criteria include things like ARVC by task force in a first degree relative or by pathology, or a pathogenic mutation in a relative. But we know that only 40 to 60% of clinical ARVC cases are genotype positive, and the waters are further muddied by coding changes of undetermined significance. So when we're assessing an athlete with ECG anomalies and right ventricular enlargement, the differentiation between athlete's heart and ARVC is not straightforward. So how do we do it? What, we, uh, what clues can we gather? Well, demographics is very important in assessing right ventricular or left ventricular adaptation in the athlete. So much like the left ventricle, we found in our study that the largest right ventricles should expectedly be seen in those who are male athletes, those who are of large body surface area, those who compete in endurance sports, and those who have concomitant left ventricular enlargement, which is important because in healthy athletes, you should see symmetrical dilatation of both sides of the heart, and in ARVC, you may see predominant right-sided enlargement. Demographics, again, important when assessing the ECG. So if you see extensive anterior T wave inversion in a white athlete, it's much more suspicious for ARVC than if you see it in a black athlete. Now, demographics are helpful, but they don't give us all the information we need. We need direct comparisons of athletes and patients with ARVC, but there's very little in the literature on this topic. So I'm gonna show you some of the data that we do have. This is another study that we performed looking at the significance of voltage criteria for right ventricular hypertrophy in athletes and we compared them to controls, patients with ARVC and pulmonary hypertensives. And this is the Sokolov-Leon voltage criterion for RVH. We found that athletes had voltage RVH twice as commonly as controls, which suggests that it's possibly a physiological change. And importantly, isolated voltage RVH, so that's RVH by voltage, but no T wave inversion, ST depression, or Q waves, was never seen in ARVC patients. So if you see voltage RVH in an athletic individual, it suggests physiological remodeling. This is a cardiac MRI study from the Netherlands from Tim Lauks's group um, who found, studied ARVC patients, controls and athletes. And they found that the task force criterion of body surface index RV size was not helpful in distinguishing ARVC from athletic right ventricular remodeling. More helpful was a reduction in RV ejection fraction and the ratio of RV to LV volume. And importantly, right ventricular wall motion abnormalities on cardiac MRI were never seen in athletes. This is work from Barbara Bauche from Italy. They studied a group of athletes controls and ARVC patients, subjected them to standard cardiac tests and found that ARVC patients had more T-wave inversion, partial right bundle, ventricular ectopics, more abnormal signal average ECGs, wall motion abnormalities, and bigger right ventricles compared to athletes, and that the athletes had greater voltages on their ECG and more right, uh, left ventricular remodeling. Now, this was a, an important study. However, it was limited in the fact that all of the athletes had normal ECGs. These were not the gray zone athletes that we encounter in clinical practice with ECG abnormalities and right ventricular remodeling who present us with the most profound clinical dilemma. So we really wanted to look at this group of individuals, your athletes who have abnormal ECGs with T-wave inversion and who have profound right ventricular structural remodeling. So we performed a study looking at athletes with T-wave inversion. We compared them to a group of patients with ARVC. We subjected all of our subjects to detailed cardiac investigation, including cardiac MRI and exercise testing, and we compared our findings to the ARVC diagnostic criteria. And this is what we found. So in the history, uh, symptoms at rest 
or vasovagal syncope were not helpful in the differentiation, as one might expect. However, if there's any family history of cardiomyopathy, sudden cardiac death, unheralded syncope, or any exertional symptoms, it was suggestive of pathology, which, which you might expect. On the ECG, there are a number of things which were not helpful in differentiating physiological RV remodeling from ARVC. So axis deviation, partial right bundle, terminal activation duration of the QRS complex, which is a diagnostic criterion, and the depth or distribution of T-wave inversion was not helpful. However, ventricular ectopy, Q waves, or reduced voltages in the ventricular leads was suggestive of ARVC. Whereas voltage criteria for left or right ventricular hypertrophy, early repolarization in any territory, or biphasic T-wave inversion was suggestive of physiological RV remodeling. On the echocardiogram, once again, RV size, both indexed or absolute, was not helpful in this differentiation. Whereas right ventricular wall motion abnormalities, reduced wall thickness, indices on tissue Doppler of reduced systolic or diastolic RV function, profound reduction in RV fractional area change, or an increased ratio of RV to LV size was suggestive of ARVC, whereas indices of left ventricular structural or functional remodeling pointed towards physiological RV remodeling. On cardiac MRI, once again, the size of the ventricle, even after body surface area indexing, could not help in this differentiation, whereas indices of concomitant left ventricular remodeling point towards physiology, whereas a more profound right ventricular ejection fraction reduction or an increased ratio of RV to LV volume above 1.2 pointed towards pathology. And again, we never saw right ventricular wall motion abnormalities in healthy athletes. We never saw delayed GAD, and we never saw left ventricular wall motion abnormalities in athletes. On the signal average GCG, the task force criterion of one abnormal parameter or even two abnormal parameters could not differentiate ARVC from physiology whereas three abnormal signal average ECG parameters is strongly suggestive of ARVC. On the Holter monitor, as you might expect, an increased VE burden points towards pathology, and a VT we never saw in any healthy athletes. And finally, on exercise testing, pseudo-normalization of T-wave inversion, or indeed the lack of pseudo-normalization, was not helpful in this distinction whereas ventricular ectopy during exercise, a poor blood pressure response during exercise, was point of ARVC. And again, we never saw symptoms during exercise, ST depression, a drop in blood pressure, or VT during healthy athlete, in, in healthy athletes. So conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, it is vital to correctly recognize cardiovascular disease in athletes, but there is significant overlap between physiological remodeling and disease. Athletes' heart versus cardiomyopathy is a common dilemma, and particularly in black athletes. The athlete's heart versus ARVC is a question that has been relatively neglected in comparison to the question of athletes' left ventricle versus hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And the ARVC task force criteria are nonspecific when applied to athletic individuals because right ventricular enlargement is common in athletes. T-wave inversion is common in healthy athletes. Right ventricular wall motion abnormality assessment is inaccurate. And late potentials, partial right bundle branch block, and ventricular ectopy are all present in healthy athletes. However, comprehensive clinical assessment, including demographics and simple uh, tests, can effectively differentiate borderline cases. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll be happy to take any questions.